What is the difference between a multi-million dollar success and a potential life-saving solution that never made it to the marketplace? It is more than just the quality of the idea. It is about who gets to the right access and support. So picture this. Every single groundbreaking ideas are being celebrated and giving equal opportunity to impact lives, despite of the founder's background gender. Hmm, isn't that be great? <laughs> Unfortunately, our industry is far from this ideal. Many world-changing ideas are being held back. Not because they lack a merit, but because they're coming from a group of individuals that has been systematically underfunded and underrepresented. So, how bad is it? Take a guess. Very. Very. Less than 3% of venture capital funding goes to women-owned businesses. Well, it's right. Despite, according to the Hoffman Foundation, that technology companies led by women generates 35% higher return on investment. Well, imagine this. <laughs> and when venture backed, 12% higher revenue than startups run by men. This led me to a journey to discover what truly separates a successful idea and an overlooked one. What I've found are the three gatekeeper myths that are holding founders back. Now, nine years ago, I was operating in heart surgery, working more than 80 hours a week, burning out. In healthcare, we typically put advocate for our patients as our number one value. <laughs> How many of us ever do it for ourselves? Yeah. Instead of the typical coping mechanism, like binge eating ice cream on the kitchen floor, <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I turned to podcasting to voice my frustration and also connect with my dream 100 thought leaders in this space to talk about the systematic problems. Now, I was told, Sabrina, you don't have the charisma like all those keynote speakers on stage. <sighs> well, on top of that, you can hear it. I'm not from this country. I wasn't born here, have an accent, anywhere from vaguely British with an Asian undertone, <laughs> <laughs> to, wait, did she learn English from watching Slumdog Millionaire? <laughs> now I questioned, would I ever make any impact? Would anybody understand me? Would anyone even hear me, even though I'm pretty loud? <laughs> so spiral alert. People heard me. They listened to me. Most of the time. <laughs> Today, I host three podcast shows, a TV show, speaking at numerous healthcare summits, and actively bringing the collaborative entities together. And what I learned is the power of addressing and overcoming the mental moat. Our first gatekeeper myth. So now I invite you to take a little walk with me. Imagine we're going to a magnificent castle. And this castle is filled with your dreams your inspirations, and your ideas. Let's take a moment to appreciate that castle of yours. 
As we get closer, we've been stopped by an overprotected moat. And this moat isn't filled with crocodiles, but something far scarier, indecision and self-doubt. Time and time again, I hear founders tell me, Sabrina, I just don't want to be salesy posting on social media. I don't even want to hear my own voice. I don't have that personality to be on stage. Don't put me on the spotlight. This internal struggle and false beliefs not only are detrimental to our own happiness, but also to the success of the business we work so hard to pursue. So what's missing here is courage. Now take Think, for example, a company that designed reusable menstrual underwears faced significant stigma challenges. But despite the pushback, these founders were able to raise $25 million in Series A funding, challenging the perception drawbridge. These external biases and misconceptions that are denying opportunities. It's like we finally found this bridge. We're getting to our castle, but we're being all blindfolded and have to toss fire torches at the same time. Oh, on top of that, someone is raising and lowering that drawbridge at random intervals, just to mess with you. <laughs> this leads to difficulty in forming partnerships, gaining market trust, and increasing the likelihood of having poor hiring decisions because everything always seemed like chaos. Now, how do you challenge people's perception? I want to see some high raising. So have you ever started a blog? Anyone? Publish book? Launch a show on YouTube, podcast, radio? Hey. And has anyone ever just simply shared your ideas on social media? A lot more, right? Now, keep your hands up if anyone, whether they know you or not, have debated with you or supported you with that idea. Almost everyone from the room. Now, that's how we change perception. Even the 1% that you reached, you challenge the way that they think. Now, let's talk about Tia. A women's health solution. Former CEO Caroline White found herself overwhelmed doing the all while the company grew. She realized she was getting in her own way. Have we all done that sometimes? <laughs> in order for the company to scale, it required a change in leadership. In a bold mood, she promoted her co-founder Felicity Yust as the new CEO. Aligning the right talent with the company's evolving need. This decision helped Atia to push back the city watch, our third gatekeeper myth. Now, take the city watch as the golden cloaks of Game of Thrones. <laughs> These rigid reinforcers who slows down innovation and their gatekeeping is so stringent that even TEDx worthy ideas need to show two forms of ID and know a secret handshake to get in. <laughs> so we understand entrepreneurship is a big roller coaster. And you choose to hop on it. And therefore, it requires to take risks. Now, us innovators, we don't mind working hard, sweat, tears, let's go. But what keeps us awake at night is that all the hard work we did 
didn't really plan out to anything that we imagined. So what's really holding us back? Franklin D. Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. What does that mean to all of you? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Many of you have heard this quote, and how many of you have embodied what FDR said to be brave? How have you been showing up with courage every day? Now you might say, Sabrina, we're not in the economic downswing, not in the warfare. Do I really need to be brave and show up with courage every day? Good argument, but is that absolutely true? Isn't that break down those walls, those barriers, and fight for your castle, your dream, a battle in itself? Are you fighting every day? Don't you deserve more? then fight for your castle. Today, according to the Small Business Administration, over 80% of startups fail within the first year. And technology companies can go up as 90%. And small cohort that survived, less than 50% don't last in the first five years even bigger, ouch. So are you going to be a statistics or are you going to fight for your castle? In my role as a board advisor, I see many founders struggling. Yeah, they have a lot of great people around them. These experts with amazing credentials, letters behind their names. Yeah, when you're taking the individual ideas, and comparing them, it can be very conflicting and something confusing. And so who do you listen to? How do you do things? What they're missing is a holistic solution, a team that creates a synergy and effective implementation. Not just doing a bunch of things that keep you busy, but actually getting somewhere. Now, what's the solution? is creating a scalable business requires a solid foundation of a 12-bore fusion advisory. These are your four elements of security and safety for your company. The four elements that converts your influence into profit. And the four elements that truly creates profitability, sustainability, and scalability. Each have the expertise to break down the mental moat, the perspectives to push past the perception drawbridge, and the authority to bypass the city watch. <laughs> and when combining the gift together, you get an integrated solution that is focused on your vision, not scattered pieces of advices. So how do we put this dream team together? We use many different tools beyond your psychological testing. <laughs> and one of the powerful tools we have is leveraging podcasting. According to ACAS, podcasts have been shown as the number one trusted platform, even outranking YouTube. This is a tool that creates authentic relationship, using as a tool of outreach and building that foundation. Because you actually care about the people that you're interviewing these influencers and decision makers that you are creating that connection and spotlighting their work. And by building this empowered ecosystem, your voice isn't just heard, it's amplified. Now today, you heard many founders 
who are able to fight for our own castle, break down the walls. They did not play a victim. What they did was able to make decisive actions, creating these innovative changes. They inspired us to not just talk about the problems, but fight for our castle to make these changes. So today, I want to call on you. Whether you have been running multiple companies, a serial entrepreneur, <laughs> someone who is a new startup founder, and anyone with a big idea, to challenge yourself, think differently. Don't accept the limitation that has been placed on you or your industry. Start sharing. Build your core team, your dream foundation, and fight for the castle that is your dream. So now, let's show the world what we're made of. Sing with me if you know this song. <laughs> Say what you want to say and let the words fell out. Honestly, I want to say a 